Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about measuring physical quantities. This will be the first quarter topic and learning competency number 7. This lesson is under the Matatag curriculum. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to first is to identify the appropriate units and tools for measuring different physical quantities. The second one is to demonstrate the correct use of measurement tools such as rulers, scales, graduated cylinders, and thermometers. And the third one is to apply their knowledge of measurement units and tools to solve real-world problems involving physical quantities. In activating prior knowledge, so let's have an activity called show and tell. The teacher will present a picture of an object or a place and the students will give it standard unit of measurement. purpose of the lesson in lesson purpose the teacher will explain to the learners that the lesson will allow them to make actual measurements using measuring devices with standard unit and clearly state the learning objectives that students will be able to identify the appropriate units and tools for measuring the different physical quantities and to explain why learning to accurately measure physical quantities is an important skill. In unlocking content vocabulary, we are going to use the match type activity. For the objectives, students will match the physical quantity with its corresponding unit of measurement and match the physical quantity on the left with its appropriate unit of measurement on the right by drawing a line between a match pairs. Invite students to come up one at a time and match a definition card to the appropriate vocabulary term. The following are the different physical quantities and units. For the length, we are going to use the meters, centimeters, millimeters, and kilometers. Meters is a standard unit of length in the metric system used to measure longer distances. Centimeters is 1 out of 100 of the meters used to measure shorter lengths. Millimeters, 1 out of 1000 of a meter used to measure a very small length. And kilometers, 1,000 meters, used to measure longer distances like the length of the road or the distance between cities. Another physical quantities and units is the mass. So for the units, we are going to use the grams, kilograms, ounces, and pounds. So grams is a metric unit used to measure the weight or mass of an object. For the kilograms, it is 1,000 grams, a larger unit used to measure the mass of heavier objects. For the ounce, a customary unit used in the United States to measure the mass of smaller objects. And pounds, a customary unit used in the United States to measure the mass of the larger object. Another physical quantities and units is the volume. For the units, we are going to use the liters, milliliters, and cubic centimeters. Liters is a metric unit used to measure the capacity or volume of a container. 
and milliliters, it is 1 out of 1,000 of a liter, used to measure smaller volumes. And cubic centimeters, a unit of volume equal to the volume of a cube with sides 1 centimeter long. Another different physical quantities and units is the temperature. For the units, we are going to use the degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. Degrees Celsius is a metric unit used to measure the temperature where 0 degrees Celsius is the freezing point of the water and 100 degrees Celsius is the boiling point of the water. And degrees Fahrenheit, it is a customary unit used in the United States to measure the temperature where 32 degrees Fahrenheit is the freezing point of water and 212 degrees Fahrenheit is the boiling point of water. Ruler icon is for the length, scale icon is for the mass, graduated cylinder icon is for the volume, and thermometer icon is for the temperature. Rulers is used to measure the length in the standard and metric units, whereas scales is used to measure the mass in grams and in kilograms. Graduated cylinder is a measure in volume in milliliters and liters, and thermometer, it is used to measure the temperature in degrees Celsius and degrees Fahrenheit. The following are the demonstration on how to use a measurement tools such as ruler. So first one is to identify the scale on the ruler. So the ruler should have markings for both standard inches and mid or in centimeters units and then familiarize yourself with the increments on the ruler the second one is to place the object you want to measure on the flat of the surface the third step is to align the zero mark on the ruler with one end at the object the fourth one is to carefully read the measurements at the other end of the object and make sure to read the measurement in the appropriate unit or if it is inches or centimeters. If the object falls between the two markings, estimate the measurement to the nearest fraction or decimal. And then the last one, record the length of the object including the unit of the measurement. The following are the steps for using a scale. So the first step is to identify the type of scale. Digital scales display the mass measurement digitally, while analog scales have a needle that points to the mass on the graduated scale. The second one is to ensure the scale is on the flat and stable surface. The third one is to turn on the scale and wait for it to display zero or the appropriate unit if it is grams or kilograms. The fourth step is to carefully place the object you want to measure on the center of the scale platform. The fifth one is to make sure the object is not touching anything else and wait for the scale to display the mass measurement. Digital scales will show the mass instantly while analog scales may require you to wait for the needle to stabilize. And the last step is to record the mass of the object including the unit of the measurement if it is gram or kilogram. The following are the steps for using a graduated cylinder. The first one is to identify the scale on the graduated cylinder. The cylinder should have markings for volume measurement, typically in milliliters or ml or liters or L. Then familiarize yourself with the increments on the scale. The second step is to place the graduated cylinder on a flat and stable surface. The third step is to carefully pour the liquid you want to measure into the cylinder and then make sure the liquid level is at eye level to ensure an accurate reading and then avoid any splashing or spilling. The fourth stage is to read the volume measurement at the bottom of the meniscus. This is the curved surface of the liquid. The measurement should be taken at the lowest point of the meniscus. And then the last step 
is to record the volume of the liquid including the unit of measurement if it is ml or liter. The following are the steps for using a thermometer. The first step is to identify the type of thermometer. Digital thermometers, it provide a digital readout of the temperature, while analog thermometers have a needle that point to the temperature on a scale. The second stage is to ensure the thermometer is appropriate for the substance or object you want to measure. For liquids, the thermometer should be fully submerged, and for the solids, the thermometer should be in direct contact with the surface. For the third step, if using a digital thermometer, turn it on and wait for it to display the current temperature. For an analog thermometer, wait for the needles to stabilize. And for the fourth step, read the temperature measurement, making sure to note the unit from degrees Celsius to degrees Fahrenheit. Digital thermometers will display the temperature directly, where for analog thermometer, carefully read the scale where the needle is pointing. And the last step is to record the temperature measurement, including the unit.